afternoon. Afternoon, how are you? Doing great, how are you? Good. Good. All right. Let's talk about go to states exhibit 45, please. Let me know when you're there. Okay, I'm there. Mr. Hill had you review exhibits 44, 45, and 46. Do you recall that? I do. And he asked you whether that indicated there was communication between Ms. Richens as well as Mr. Grossman. Do you remember that? I do. Okay. So let's go to 44. And on 44, how is the one of the senders or the parties identified as? Forty-four. Yes. We have Mr. Grossman. Perfect. Yes. And then let's go to 45. And how is one of the parties identified as? My princess. And then above that, where it says under party, first num uh, number one, it says from and then it has owner. Yes, 9317 is Mr. Richards number. So that is not Mr. Grossman. Correct. Okay. So just to clarify, going back to Mr. Hill's questions, your testimony that what was included in Exhibit 45 was Mr. Grossman, that was incorrect. Yes, I was mistaken. Oh. You indicated that uh, you were asked about the usage on the phone about whether it was, you indicated it was normal tracking for that device. Do you recall that? Uh, and Mr. Richens phone, just now. Uh, about no, normal, normal usage, is that what you're referring? Yes, you remember that, yes. Phone calls? Yes. Text messages? Yes. Okay. Interestingly, you said normal tracking for that device. I suspect you mean for that person. They can be one and the same, yes. The device doesn't do anything by itself. Right, it has to be manipulated. Correct. Activated, yes. So when you say normal tracking for that device, yes. you mean normal usage by the person who that device belonged to? Typically, yes. Okay. You have no way of knowing really what the normal usage is, unless you review everything, correct? To the number, no. Correct. Yeah. Perfect. You indicated that when responding to deletions on Miss Richens' phone, you indicated that it was from everybody. Yes. Okay. Pretty well. Pretty much. Yes. Was there a time frame for that? Yes. And what was that? Um, January through March. About March 10th or so. And that was for which phone? That was for the 1987 number. Perfect. Testified about attending a Sunbright certified operator course? Yes. When was that? 2017. Have you been recertified since then? I have not. A Celebrite physical analyzer course as well? Yes. And when was that? The same time, 2017. Then a 40-hour cell phone analysis and mapping course. Yes. That one was not through Celebrite, that was through Zetex and Trax. Is that what it was? Zetex is the company? Correct. Trax is the program, yes. Thank you. And so separate from Celebrite, but when was that? The initial was, I believe, in 2013. And the subject matter expert class was in 2007, 2000, 2017. Any of you ever recertified in that? No. The tracks technology it gathered from the testimony, that's related to mapping? Yes. Okay. And is that what you used here? Uh, yes. Now, you were retained by the Summit County Attorney's Office, is that correct? Correct. Were you hired by anybody else? No. 
And it was specifically to evaluate the digital evidence in this case. Yes. To analyze it. Yes. Specifically phone extractions. Yes. Of Eric Richens. Correct. Of Corey Richens. Yes. Of Carmen Lauber. Yes. Others. Uh, yes. Now, to be clear, you didn't perform the extractions. Correct. Who performed Corey's on any of her phones? I believe the RCFL did those. Who at RCFL? I don't know that. Who did the extraction on Eric's phone? I don't know. Who did the extraction on Carmen's phone? I don't know. What about the other phones? I don't know. The examiner's name is in each report, but I don't know them on the hand. So you didn't perform the extractions. You weren't present when they were done. Correct. In fact, I think, if my timeline's correct, you were hired after the extractions were done. Yes, for most of them, yeah. So you don't have the benefit of having observed the extraction examiner do the extraction. Correct. Or validate the results of the extraction. Uh, through the examiner, no. And you don't have the privilege of observing the extraction examiner perform uh, manual decoding methods. Correct. Or manual decoding methods in the hexadecimal code. Correct. You didn't confirm whether the examiner, extraction examiner, validated their extraction tools. No. Let's talk about the Celebrite extraction process. Okay. We're going to go from the device to the data. Okay. Okay. That, I'd like to be so visual. So, this is a target device. Correct. Let's, let's okay. assume this is a target device. Okay. Let's hope it's not a target device for my sake. This is a target device. We're going to say that this right here is UFED. Okay? So that is the universal forensic extraction device. Correct? Yes. That's what it stands for? Yes. You yeah. You are, I would make an objection at this point to Mr. Relevance. I don't know that this is necessary at this point in time to a probable cost standard. I'm not sure where we're headed, so I'm going to give Mr. Relevance a little latitude here until I know where we're headed. This is UFED, okay? You're going to plug this into this, and then what it's going to do is it's going to spit out something. Yes. Correct? Yes. I mean, it's not the technical <laughs> term. But. So once we have that, it's in a raw format. Correct. Now, you have been given, when you were brought on, the output, what it spit out. Correct. All right? Yes. Okay. So your testimony, both at the detention hearing and here, is based on this, on the spit out version. Correct. Okay. You have not received the raw data. There is raw data available, but Correct. no. Correct. Yes. There is raw data available. You have not received it. Correct. You have not analyzed it. Correct. You have not cross-referenced it with what you were given. Correct. Perfect. Now, was deleted, it doesn't tell you in what you've been given how that happened. Correct. Why that happened. Correct. Where it happened. Also correct. The 
raw data could potentially hold that. Potentially. Now, you use Celebrite, these extraction tools, you rely on them to provide you this information so that you could then assist in this case of Summit County Attorney's Office, with their case, correct? Correct. With meeting probable cause standards? Correct. Okay. In terms of location of individuals? Yes. Such as Ms. Lauber? Yes. Okay. Now, to be clear, I only have what you've been given as well. So I'm relying on the information that has been spit out, but not on the raw data. Just so we're clear. I want to talk to you about your validation process. Okay. Validation of data. Okay. As, or having been rather, certified, you know the importance of being able to validate the data that you review. Yes. One of those methods is possibly to use it with the, or compared to the uh, raw data, that's one, way. That's one way, yes. Another way is perhaps to use the cell data location from call detail records. Yes. In terms of location, yes. Now, when you use the software, that was a form of validating, uh, the, sorry, I apologize, the, what did you call it? The tracks technology, that tracks software. Yes. That's a way of validating whether the information that you received is accurate. Right. You talked about the cell towers. Yes. Now this program, does it, we're going back to spitting, does it spit out something for you? It does. Okay. Now, have you provided that to the Summit County Attorney's Office? Um, yes. You're talking about the mapping? The mapping? Yes. Okay. And is that, are those towers that you referenced earlier, are they uh, sectorized or on the uh, omnidirectional? They're sector. Okay. When you use that program, were you aware at that point that that software had been found to be unreliable in courts? I'm not aware of that. You've not been aware of that. But you haven't been certified since 2017. Uh, I've been certified since 2017, but I have not. I, there's no, there was no need for research on that. Of course, it's a, it's a learning, and then it's a continuing education. What software version did you use on for the tracks uh, software? Oh, off the top of my head, I don't know. When you did it, was it the most up to date? Uh, yes, as far as I know. Had you updated it since 2017? Uh, yes, it's web based, so it's updated constantly, so you can rely on the fact that if you're updating, say today, that it would be the most up-to-date software um, package. And what about Celebrite itself, your Celebrite certification process? Yes. There are no requirements Correct. To, to recertify. Correct. But they do recommend that you recertify. They do. Every two years, they do. No. But you've not done that. Correct. Along those same lines, there is no state of Utah, say, standard for mobile forensic extraction. Not that I'm aware of. No. There's no national one? No. There's no international one? No. It's pretty much whatever Celebrite says. Uh, well, they're, they're one company. Correct. So, to my point. Did you review or were you given rather any mobile data sets from the individuals who perform the extractions on all these phones? Like sample data sets, control data sets? Uh, no. no. Are you 
familiar with external enrichment? I'm not. Are you, you had indicated rather, you were asked about the activity sensor of a Apple Watch. Yes. How did you determine between the detention hearing and now that it was in fact an Apple Watch? A uh, review of the download stated self right instruction that it was a connected device. Now, are you qualified in mobility metrics? No. Do you know what mobility metrics are? No. You testified about the distance that was covered on the morning of March 4th by a connected device. Yes. And you were very specific on the number. Okay, yes, more or less. But you don't know how that number was calculated. I don't know the, the internal calculation process of the devices, no. You just read it. Yes. You read what was spit out. Correct. You don't have the data, the, the raw data. Correct? Correct. So everything you've testified to is basically because you've read it. Well, yes, and the extractions from the devices, but yes. Correct. Just what was given to you. Yes. Were there items that were deleted from Mr. Richens' phone? Not that I'm aware of. But it could be. Could be. Have you ever worked with Mr. Todd Gabler? Um, with? <laughs> no. Alongside? Alongside and, quite frankly, against. <laughs> on this case? No. Well, with, yes, on this case. With, yes. on this case. Has he provided information to you? Yes. Has any of that information been used in your testimony today? No. I believe that's it, Judge. If I may just have a quick second. Take a moment. Just a couple more to go on. Go ahead. Has the Richards family ever hired you? No. Have they ever paid you? No. I did sound quieter. I did sound quieter. I was just checking for a second, folks. It sounded like my conscience was speaking. Back to my mind. Brittany, you broke it.
things going overhead are muted, so. A lot of things go over my head. There we go. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, last question. Yes. Did you want me to repeat that? Have they ever paid you? Yeah. The last question. Perfect. What was provided to you by Todd Gabriel? Off the top of my head, mostly tolls. Tolls? Yeah. No. Call tolls. Toll records from the, the Verizon toll records. No further questions. Okay. Hey. Mr. Hill, can you read it? No, just pick it. Okay. Mr. Ramos asked you about um, any deletions that you observed from Eric Richard's phone. And um, you had previously testified that the, a picture that he sent on the 14th was deleted. Oh, yes, that's correct, yeah. Uh, how could you tell that that was deleted? Well, it's not present any longer. Um, it shows a file path that it used to exist, but the image itself is not there. And so to follow that, when he asks you if there's anything else that's deleted, did you see anything similar to that picture or any remnants on that phone or relics that showed deletion the same way that photo did? Not that I can recall. Thank you. That's the only question I have. Mr. Ramos, anything on that? No, Your Honor. Thank you.